street legal. All right. <laughs> it is six o'clock on Tuesday, November 15th, and I am calling to order the Plasterville City or Plasterville Planning Commission meeting. <laughs> Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mr. Rivas, could you please call roll? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Vice Chair Friend is noted as being absent. Uh, Chair Gopper. Here. Uh, Commissioner Keeney. Here. Commissioner Lepper. Here. Commissioner List. Here. We have a quorum. All right. Great. So we will now move on to, we have no closed session report tonight. So we will move on to item number four, adoption of the agenda. I move that we adopt the agenda. Second. All right. I have a first and a second. All in favor of adopting the agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. So the motion passes 4-0. We'll be moving on to the consent calendar. Uh, on tonight's consent calendar is approving the minutes of the regular Planning Commission meeting of October 4th, 2022. Would any member of the public like to comment on the consent calendar? All right. I see none, so I'll bring it back to the Commission. I move we um, accept the uh, minutes from the October 4th meeting. Second. Okay, I have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. The motion passes 4-0. So we have adopted the consent calendar items. Uh, we have no items pulled from the consent calendar. Uh, do we have any items of, or let's see, items of interest to the public and public con comment? This portion of the meeting is a uh, reserve for folks who would like to comment on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Would any member of the public like to make a comment that is within the jurisdictional matter of the Planning Commission that is not on tonight's agenda? Great. You'll have uh, three minutes to address. Uh, my name is Kathy, and I am the CEO of the El Dorado County Fair Association. And I um, am talking specifically about the 212 Armory Road project. And I noticed in the document that you guys put out uh, for this meeting, um, you've got about 17.37 acres of vacant land zone for um, the lower income household. Um, 17 acres, yeah. Um, so my problem with this project, um, there's several, and I have some documents I'll drop off with you guys. Uh, first of all, is during the period between May 10th and June 10th when um, there was an opportunity for the public to speak about this project, myself, my coworkers, my former boss, our board, and some other members of the public did write to an, a letter of opposition to the state and to the Jamboree <coughs> Housing um, with our problems with the project as it was laid out. Um, during when they f when they published their final final initial study mitigated declaration, um, none of those letters were included in there. And so I reached out and was told that they were lost. I told them where we sent the letters, which was the address on the form that Pierre provided. Um, they found them. I asked them, so what now? And they said, well, we'll be in touch. And I haven't heard anything. Um, so that puts it in a sour, sour light for me already. It leaves me with a little bit of distrust. Um, this project violates many of the city's own building codes and policies. Um, the height, the density, um, the parking is, is a, a ridiculous. Um, an 83 unit complex, one, two, and three bedrooms, and we have 96 places to park. I know when the council was addressed with this issue, they said that they would be using bicycles and skateboards and public transportation, and we all know in El Dorado County that's not going to happen. Um, there's not even enough room on Ray Lawyer for these people to park. So that's going to turn it into our problem. Um, traffic issues. I don't know if any of you happen to go by the fair during fire camp. Um, during fire camp, big races in the fair, Armory Road turns into a one-way road, so you enter it from Placerville Drive and you exit Ray Lawyer. They've got a driveway coming in and out of Armory Road. 
I don't, I'm not sure how that's going to work. And if you've ever been down Armory Road, I think you'll find that it's not really wide enough to be a real road. There's no sidewalk, and it's it's it needs to be repaved badly. Um, I also believe that the sewer line that was originally installed there to accommodate the armory is the only one there, so I'm not sure what sewer line they're talking about tying into. I think that's going to be a big problem. Um, my proposal, because I don't want to just come here and complain, is because the city has noted that they have 17.37 acres of property that would be better suited for this project, um, I would propose that perhaps the city consider trading that property with the state for a, a better better located. Um, th there's a 2,500 square foot perfectly good office building on that lot. Darn. Could you please wrap up your comment? Yeah. Anyways, um, that could be used for warehouse or whatever. And there's a, a nice office there. So a trade would be good. We would probably consider buying it from the city if that were to happen. And I just have um, some documents that I'd like to share with you guys. You can look at it at your leisure. Okay. Thank, thank you. you for your time. All right. So we will move on to item number eight, written communications. Do we have any written communications tonight? Uh, thank you, Chair Gopberg. We do have uh, one letter we received dated November 10th, 2022, and that is from the Department of Housing and Community Development, and that's in regards to item 10.3. Okay. And the commissioners each have a copy of the letter. All right, great. Thank you. All right, and we have no presentations and educational workshop sessions tonight, so we will move on to item number 10.1, Site Plan Review, SPR 15-04-R and Variance 22-02. And I believe there was a request to uh, continue this item, but I'll let staff speak to that. Uh, thank you, Chair Gopberg. Uh, staff is requesting a continuance of this item. Essentially, uh, we found ourselves negotiating aspects of the site plan up until uh, the last minute in terms of when we needed to complete our staff report. So we're still working with them, uh, and we're still analyzing their latest site plan so that we can complete the staff report, and we should be able to bring that uh, to your December 6th meeting. Great. Would anybody like to make a motion or? I'd like to make a motion to continue the SPR 15-04-R and variance 22-02 consideration to the December 6, 2022 Planning Commission meeting. I'll second. Okay. I have a first and a second. Could I get a roll call vote, please? Chair Gottberg? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Keeney? Aye. Commissioner Lepper? Aye. Commissioner List? Aye. All right, great. This item will be continued to the December 6th uh, Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. So we will move on now to item number 10.2, conditional use permit 80-07. Uh, Mr. Rivas, could you please provide the staff report? Sure, and I'll be uh, brief. The staff report isn't really too long. Uh, basically, we have a conditional use permit for a storage yard that was approved in 1980. That is CUP 80-07. Uh, this uh, particular property, or at least this is a portion of the property. Uh, just for a little background, there are actually three conditional use permits that regulate uses on this property. The uh, CUP in question is in regards to, if you look in your staff report on page two or I'm behind you on the wall, um, it is that vacant lot that has been used on and off as a storage yard. So essentially we have an ongoing code enforcement um, with the owner of the property. This has been going on since February of 2018. Attachment one of your staff report has sort of has a chronology of the different actions we've taken place uh, regarding code enforcement. Uh, fines have been levied and still no avail. We cannot get compliance. So essentially, uh, it is staff's recommendation that the Planning Commission revoke this permit. Essentially, under 
uh, zoning code sections 10-3-6, both D and E. By operation of law, this conditional use permit uh, should have expired. Uh, they have yet, since it was first approved, to have been in full compliance with the conditions of approval. That concludes staff's report. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have at this time. Are there any questions for staff? I, I just would uh, like a little more uh, background uh, explanation. I uh, did do a, a site visit. I passed by that area on Placerville Drive, Drive often. Um, but I did uh, take a close look at it when we uh, received the staff report. Um, and it is uh, abandoned, and in uh, no way are they adhering to the terms of the CUP. Looking at the uh, the log of um, that was the code enforcement log that was provided, um, I was looking at uh, on June twenty seventh, twenty twenty two, a third administrative uh, violation letter was uh, sent, and. Um, said that the permanent conditions of approval will be scheduled to go to planning commission uh, to be terminated and um, and a five hundred dollar fine was assessed did the the whole uh, the applicant of the CUP uh, have any comment back to the city once uh, this was sent in June did they say uh, please wait we have someone who's going to um, want to use the property under the terms of the CUP did you hear from them uh, just just going back uh, earlier, <clears throat> we were originally working with Pro Builders. Pro Builders was using the site for storage, and so uh, we were working with them as the tenant uh, to bring this into compliance. It never happened. Pro Builders, of course, you're probably aware, moved across the street. And then later, uh, we were working with a group that was looking at opening up a cannabis dispensary on the site, and there were actually in negotiations with the property owner to purchase the entire property and it would be a cannabis dispensary uh, a rather large one and so they were interested in bringing the permit um, current as far as the conditions of approval for the CUP and of course uh, that third cannabis dispensary ended up going away there was issues in internally with their organization so uh, again, it never happened. I think the furthest we got were or was the construction of the uh, planter boxes. That's as far as it went. And then it just, again, property fell into disrepair. We have some current pictures on the wall behind you uh, where it's a fire hazard, it's weedy. Uh, they've never been able to utilize the planter boxes. Uh, so um, I know the code enforcement official has been uh, in in discussions with uh, the owner Barbara Heddingson and but I don't I can't speak any more to that other than we had been well I would say threatening revoking this permit for quite a while uh, while we were taking code enforcement essentially as you can see uh, in that log this this is this is taking up an inordinate amount of staff time and we just feel that this permit, again, has never been fully uh, uh, satisfied and si satisfying the conditions of approval. And so it expired by operation of law in accordance with the zoning code. Uh, also, you may or may not be aware, the city was awarded quite a large sum of money, a grant, I think, in the neighborhood of $50 million to do a um, uh, uh, to replace the, the bridge which adjoins this property and there's a box culvert that runs underneath this. And so I don't know the extent of the right of way that will be acquired, but it may affect somewhat some of this property as well. So uh, from staff's perspective, uh, this conditional use permit is stale and has expired. If they wish to use it, they can certainly apply for a new conditional use permit, which would then consider current conditions rather than those dating back to 1980. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of things, the, the conditional use permit would uh, obviously went from uh, owner to uh, renter, you know, it was issued to one party, then it transferred to pro builders and so on. So it does uh, go um, with the land. Uh, but if the cannabis dispensary uh, had 
moved forward, they would have been coming before us with uh, a new conditional use permit because this, the, one, the existing one is just for storage of uh, storage of rental units. I think is what uh, in 1980s what was the issue? Is that right? So they, it would have been modified anyway. Yes, that is correct. And uh, typically, from an administrative perspective, uh, we wouldn't issue numerous conditional use permits that affect portions of a piece of property. We would have had one CUP that would address the totality of the uses on the property. The only exception to that would be where we have a very, very specific type of use, say like a cell tower, where there is a small lease, like a postage stamp portion of a larger property. Well, then maybe in those cases you have a, a uh, use permit that would, would just affect a portion of the property. So this is sort of an antiquated way how this was handled back in 1980, but that's how it was handled. Um, uh, but essentially I, it, it's the property owner that, that I would say possesses the CUP. And so what pro builders would come in or the <coughs> cannabis operations could come in and use that portion of the property as a storage yard um, in accordance with the conditions of approval, but it never happened. Are there any other questions for staff? All right, I see none. Uh, I will say the let the record reflect that there are no members of the public in the audience anymore at this point in the meeting, so we will not have any public comment. So I'll bring it back to the uh, commission for discussion and a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion Great. that uh, we uh, follow the recommended uh, action in the staff report, uh, adopting the staff report as part of the public record and make the um, four findings of fact uh, to support the revocation of the CUP um, 80-07. And the third uh, point is uh, the findings, uh, find that the conditions of the CUP uh, have not been met and uh, we hereby revoke CUP 80-07 in accordance with city code section 10-3-6 DNE. And that is my motion. I second. Okay, I have a first and a second. Uh, could I get a roll call vote please? Aye. Commissioner Keeney? Aye. Commissioner Lepper? Aye. Commissioner List? Aye. All right, the motion passes 4 0. So we will now be moving on to item number 10.3, the revised 2021 2029 20, housing element update uh, general plan amendment. Uh, could I please have the staff report, Mr. Rivas? Uh, yes, and I'm going to start with just a little background for those of you or people in the audience that don't understand what exactly a uh, housing element is of our current city general plan. So a housing element is one of seven mandatory elements per state law of the city of Placerville general plan. The purpose of a housing element is to identify and analyze existing and projected housing needs in an effort to preserve improve and develop housing for all economic segments of, of the community in accordance with state housing element law and that's article 10.6 of the government code a housing element is the only general plan element for which state certification is required the review and certification is performed by the state department of housing and community development after adoption of the element by the city a certified element may allow the city to be eligible for future state funding in areas of community development and affordable housing projects uh, the current cycle six housing element update is for the 2021 2029 planning period and the preparation of this update began in february of 2020 the first staff administrative draft was sent to hdd back in may 14th of 2021 for review and comment the comments were received from HCD on July 13th of 2021 so due to recent changes in housing element law uh, basically due to assembly bill 686 
that was approved in 2018 and became effective on January 1st of 2019. All housing elements now must include a program that promotes and affirmatively furthers, and I'm using the language right out of the law, fair housing opportunities throughout the community for all persons regardless of race, color, religion, sex, gender, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, marital status, natural, national origin, ancestry, familial status, source of income, disability, veteran or military status, or genetic information protected by the California Fair Employment and Housing Act. It's a mouthful. In addition, all housing elements due on or after July 1st, 2021 must include an assessment of fair housing consistent with the core elements of the analysis that is required by the Federal Affirmative Furthering Fair Housing, that's AFFH, final rule of July 16th of 2015. To comply with the requirements under AB 686, the city utilized a non-competitive planning grant that was administered by the Sacramento Area Council of Governments for the consulting services of BAE Urban Economics to prepare a fair housing assessment and related housing program for the 2021-29 housing element update. And uh, we were quite pleased because um, I was aware of BAE. They're one of the preeminent uh, consultants in the state of California, and they specialize in creating fair housing assessments for jurisdictions. So staff then prepared a revised draft that included a fair housing assessment, which, which is the Appendix B of the housing element uh, that was previously approved by you and previously adopted by the city council for review and consideration by the Planning Commission. The draft housing element was considered by the Planning Commission back on August 19th of 2021, and the Commission forwarded a recommendation to the City Council for its adoption. The City Council adopted the housing element on August 31st of 2021, and then submitted it to HCD for certification on September 2nd of 2021. So HCD responded with a comment letter dated December 1st of 2021, and that's attachment uh, two of your staff report, which stated that additional revisions were needed to ensure compliance with state law. So I'm now, to get, now that's the current background. I'm gonna get into where we are now. So following staff's review of the December 1st uh, letter from HCD, uh, the city then uh, went back to SACOG Sacramento Area Council of Governments for assistance in responding to HCD and bringing the housing element into compliance. Uh, SACOG was able to repurpose REAP funding, and REAP stands for Regional Early Action Planning Funds. These were available to provide uh, jurisdictions with direct assistance to non-compliant jurisdictions. So to make us all feel a little bit better, the, the city of Placerville was not the only jurisdiction that did not have a uh, housing element that the HCD felt was compliant with state law. In fact, we were one of many, and that's just within the SACOG planning area. There were a number throughout the state. Uh, SACOG's consultant then would, would be Ascent Environmental, uh, assisted with the effort uh, providing the lead in uh, Bay Area economics via a subcontract through Ascent. So Ascent then was the principal uh, consultant to help us with reformulating policies and taking a hard look of our policies, objectives, and programs uh, where they were falling short and making sure that they provided for um, measurable uh, new numerical means of showing compliance. So uh, ACD felt, if you look at their letter, there wasn't <clears throat> a lot of uh, um, way of actually showing over time how we would come into compliance. So they wanted some actual numbers. And then we also had uh, BAE, that's Bay Area Economics, uh, revisit uh, the fair housing assessment. Uh, HCD wanted uh, much more additional analysis uh, in regards to uh, providing support information for uh, furthering uh, afford uh, uh, fair housing. So 
so the city has received then the housing element incorporating the recommendations provided by assent and BAE in response to HCD comments. The review and amendment process was iterative, meaning it took us many months going back and forth between staff, the consultants, and then getting together with the staff at HCD to where we all felt we, we were satisfying the letter of the law. Uh, we held virtual meetings with key staff until consensus was reached and then HCD was, inform was informally satisfied with the proposed modifications allowing the city to move forward with the review and adoption process of an amend amendment housing element. Uh, that's where we are tonight. And so I provided you a copy of that uh, letter. It, it's, it, it's a formal letter. I, I characterize it as, as informal because the formal process is once the Planning Commission makes its recommendation to City Council and the Council hopefully will take action to adopt it, making these revisions, then that will be a, a revised or an amended adopted housing element. We send that to ACD. They are there and they're going to automatic turn around and, and certify it uh, uh, based on the changes we've made and the agreements that we've made. Uh, no public comments have been received to date on, on this document. Uh, the city has received a letter from HCD November 10th. Uh, you have copies of that. Uh, HCD is stating that the housing element as amended now complies with the government code meeting the statutory requirements that are described in that earlier December 1st, 2021 letter. So the Planning Commission is being asked to review and consider a recommending approval to the housing element as amended to the City Council. The City Council is tentatively scheduled to consider adoption of the housing element on their December 13th meeting. Uh, staff is then making the following recommendations. If I can find my full staff report. So staff is recommending that the Planning Commission take the following actions. Uh, 1A is the amendments to the City of Placerville 2013-2021 General Plan Housing Element Negative Declaration, uh, which adequately addressed the potential physical impacts associated with the implementation of the proposed 2021-2029 City of Placerville uh, Housing Element. And so that was the previous amendment that you amended or that you recommended the Planning Commission approve the, the first go around. So 1B is the 2021-2029 housing element has been prepared consistent with the general plan amendment uh, containing goals, policies, programs, and quantified objectives. And that's where we were lacking. So if you look at those changes, we mainly provided for quantifying how we're going to you know, achieve what we want to achieve as far as fair housing to meet the projected housing needs to comply with state housing element law. And then 1C, public comments received have been considered and incorporated into the 2021-29 housing element where appropriate, basically the comments from the previous uh, housing element. We received no new public comments. And then uh, two, forward a recommendation to the City Council to approve the amendments to the 2013-2021 general plan uh, housing element negative declaration for the 2021-2029 housing element and to adopt, which is uh, we've, the, the file name is general plan amendment 2001, adopting amendments to the 2021-2029 housing element of the city of Plasville general plan. And one last thing to add to that, um, I provided each of you with a proposed amendment, a single one. Uh, uh, thank you to Com Commissioner Keeney. She actually really jumped on this and went through it. And I, I certainly agreed uh, with regards to a uh, proposed change to program B-3, and this is just the objective section. So what you have before you is a colored version. You could see in red what was originally added. Staff added the strikeouts so that the objective is going to read improve housing accessibility for persons with disabilities through annual improvements to the accessibility of public facilities, 
uh, comma, 10% of new units accessible for persons with disabilities, comma, and this is the added portion, and the consideration of all requests for reasonable accommodation in accordance with Zoning Ordinance Section 10-3-12, Request for Reasonable Accommodation. So it's already codified in our zoning code, and I spoke with uh, uh, HCD staff, key staff uh, earlier today. They are comfortable with this, so there's no issue. They will continue to uh, speak kindly of our housing element. Uh, so with that change, uh, that concludes staff's recommendation. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have at this time. Okay. Are there any questions for staff? Commissioner Lever? Not, not necessarily a question. I wanted to thank you for the comprehensive list of the updates. It made it very easy to flow through and understand what the changes were um, and for clarifying that no new public comments were received. And I just had a question about the, um, the Airbnb, if you will, the uh, short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods. Do we have a, an estimated timeline of when we're going to have an ordinance on that? For uh, we we do not. Okay. We do not have. Yeah. There's Got it. A, there's I know a you're busy. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I was yeah. just curious if that right. because I saw it specifically noted had risen more up to the top in terms of of coming to fruition with an actual ordinance around it. Yeah, and I'm happy to maybe give a little explanation as to why I I uh, the language is included the way it is. Basically, there was some comment at the council level about Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. But I just want to uh, explain that this is a housing element to provide for affordable housing, not an element to provide for lodging. And it was clear that some of the um, uh, council members were interested in going further beyond the, uh, uh, the short-term rental ordinance that the city recently adopted, allowing them in their three commercial zones, that being commercial, highway commercial, and the central business district. Uh, but there was that thought, and staff agrees we, we don't see an issue uh, because there would not be a uh, loss of housing units because we have a severe shortage of housing units. <clears throat> so if we allow, say, somebody has a large house and their kids go away to college and they have a, an extra bedroom or two, then they would be afforded the ability to rent those out on a short-term basis, and so we would proclamate some regulations on how that could occur. And so that's the purpose. We wrote that in there so that when it does go to council, council will see that that's in the mind of staff and it's it's in there with the uh, proviso that we're not going to lose any housing stock. Any other questions for staff? Just curiosity question. How many jurisdictions in the state of California are not subject to this housing elements. Do you have any idea? I believe all 58 counties are required under state law to have an adopted and certified housing element, and all 400 and some odd cities in the state of California are all, required. All cities, then? All cities, whether you're charter or general law. I was just reading, too, the Redondo Beach might be one that they're really battling this whole thing. That just came onto my radar. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Keeney? I just uh, thank you. Um, I uh, want to th uh, thank you, Pierre, for uh, this incredible job. This is a lot of work. It was a lot of work a year ago. <laughs> uh, and uh, now, you know, the, um, the legal landscape shifted uh, dramatically. Um, you took this over. Um, Andrew Painter had uh, taken over I had been doing the housing element as I recall that was uh, yes. one of his projects so you had to uh, take on this uh, big project from him uh, and then uh, as you mentioned uh, before the meeting I just want to uh, go on record uh, the city was able to benefit from uh, the SACOG uh, grant to bring in the consultants uh, assent and BAE BAE um, and I honestly think they did a tremendous job looking over the uh, amendments that were made. Uh, they integrated our general plan, our goals in our community. They uh, made a point to uh, note uh, you know, the, uh, how our small rural city is 
different from a lot of jurisdictions uh, that HCD has to look at. So, the, you know, our, our state agencies have to be objective. They have to, as uh, Commissioner List pointed out, every city, every county has to have a, a housing element up to these standards. So HCD is looking statewide, but the consultant was uh, working with you to recognize how, you know, Placerville, we, we don't have a lot of the problems that uh, these laws were uh, in, uh, enacted to address. Uh, yet, you know, we still have to comply. And, I, you know, I just think it was um, a, a very good, uh, not a boilerplate approach to it, uh, yet I'm really pleased to see that, uh, you know, HCD did, uh, you know, think that, you know, it's a fine job. We meet all those uh, legal requirements. And now it puts the city in a position to um, go for grants, go for money to help us build if someone wants to come for a project uh, for affordable housing. Now we're in a position to accept it. If we, if we don't do our groundwork, then, you know, we're, we're behind all along. Other jurisdictions will be ahead of us in get, getting those funds to help build the housing that uh, we recognize that we need. So. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for all that hard work and, and ask you to extend our thanks uh, also to the consultants and the other people who worked on this. Uh, just a wonderful job. Yeah, Chair, if I may, I just want to piggyback on, on, the, on, on the remarks made by Commissioner Keeney. Uh, I really want to acknowledge uh, um, Chelsea Payne. Uh, she was the lead with Ascent, and she was the principal author of trying to uh, uh, help facilitate an agreement between the city and HCD in bringing the housing element into compliance, I must admit that there were there were times I was ready to, you know, jump into the screen. Uh, but she was extremely <laughs> professional. Kept she was able to keep me calm, cool, and collected uh, so we could reach this agreement. And I wanted to acknowledge her for that, and thank you for reminding me to to do just that. Um, and I had you no know, questions on this, but also I just think, yeah, it was a, an immense amount of work that went into doing this. I think it's, you know, a really good document. I think the changes address the state concerns. And so um, that's really great that we were able to, you know, do that. Um, I would note for the record, there are still no members of the public in the audience on this item. So we will have no public comment as there is no one present to um, provide public comment. So with that, I will bring it back to the commission if there's any further discussion or uh, motion on this item. Uh, Chair, if I just make uh, one comment, just so the Planning Commission is aware, uh, staff, it's incumbent on staff to um, proactively try and get uh, public comment. So we do have uh, a list of um, stakeholders and uh, fair housing and affordable housing advocates out there, different groups uh, that, that we um, assembled from the first go around and they were all emailed uh, this information and were made uh, aware that we were bringing through these comments. So we were hoping to get something, but yeah, great. we didn't. Yeah, thank you for that. Good. I'll make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the staff record into um, we have discussion oh yes I'm so sorry mm -hmm. absolutely thank you madam chair um, <clears throat> here we go again I think uh, mr. Paul McDougal said it best on page uh, the last page of uh, attachment number two he said several federal state regional funding programs consider housing elements compliance as an eligibility and ranking criteria. I'm going to say this again because I said it the last time we went through this, that I truly believe that what we're seeing here is government by blackmail. What he's saying is you either do what we ask you to do or you're not going to get your funds, your tax dollars back. I don't support that type of government. I'm disappointed that they don't have enough faith in local governments to step in and take care of the problem as they see fit in their area. 
why this has to be crammed down our throats is beyond me. Thank you. Is there any further discussion or comment? All right, I see none. If uh, you'd like to make a motion. Yes. Thank you for your comments. Um, I would like to make a motion to go ahead and adopt the staff record, uh, the staff report into the public record and make the following findings A, B, and C as listed in the staff report, including adopting the updated language for program B3 as described in the version provided to the commission, as well as to forward the recommendation to our city council to approve the amendments for the uh, housing element negative declaration for the 2021-2029 housing element and adopt GPA 20-01 for, uh, which adopts the amendments to the 2021-29 housing element to the city of Placerville general plan. Second. I said that. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have a first and a second. Could I get a roll call vote, please? Chair Gottberg. Aye. Commissioner Keeney. Aye. Commissioner Lepper. Aye. Commissioner List. No. All right, the motion passes 4-1 with Commissioner List voting no. Sorry, 3-1 with Commissioner List voting no. <laughs> All right, so we will move on, and this will go to the uh, City Council next. So uh, folks will have another opportunity there if they'd like to make public comment on this item. Uh, we have no continued items tonight. Is there any new business? Uh, no new business, um, Chair Key. Chair Gottberg. Okay, great. So we will move on to matters from commissioners and staff. Are there any matters that staff would like to let us know about tonight? Uh, yes, we are hoping that, uh, and this is in regards to both the uh, Middletown affordable housing apartment and the Mallard affordable housing uh, apartment. Uh, the city, as you recall, we were in receipt of community development block grant funds for the land acquisition. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we can't, uh, we're not able to uh, pay forward uh, using those monies to close escrow. So uh, the city is, um, is going to get a sh what's called a bridge loan. It's essentially a short-term loan from RCAC. That organization specializes in providing these kinds of short-term or bridge loans to uh, facilitate affordable housing projects. So that loan will be in approximately one and a half million dollars. Uh, we that money will go into escrow, and then uh, the money will be then provided. Um, uh, we will then, as soon as as soon as escrow closes, we will then go to HCD to request for reimbursement of those funds. So all all um, costs in terms of going through the the title. Uh, loan fees and such will be also we will be able to recoup through the community block grant funds so I'm just reporting that uh, escrow should close hopefully by the end of this week because I am out all next week <laughs> <laughs> so that would conclude uh, any staff reports thank you okay great and are there any uh, items that commissioners would like to bring forward this time yeah, we will have a meeting on December 6th as we continued an item to December 6th. So. Any other business that you anticipate? It is hoped that we can <clears throat> bring to the commission an update to our um, accessor or our um, ADU or uh, accessory dwelling unit ordinance. Uh, we've come before you in the past with updating that ordinance. There have been two subsequent uh, state bills that have since revised how we treat um, accessible um, ADU applications. So uh, we have a draft ready. Um, uh, Kristen and I are reviewing it, and hopefully we'll bring that to you as well on December 6th. Just, Pierre, real quick, um, I assume that the comments made during the public comment portion are on your radar and being addressed in the correct channels regarding the... Um, the armory housing that Kathy addressed. 
Yeah, she has made those comments before, uh -huh. and basically, uh, the Plattsville Armory is a state pr is a state project, and so it's moving forward. Uh, the city has no jurisdiction over the property. We were a just a I would say a, a player in terms of uh, they listened to our comments, and we had the ability to review the site plan and design the elevations of the hotel or of the apartment uh, that's being proposed by Jamboree. Uh, but the state went through a whole process of an RFP and they awarded the contract to Jamboree to actually uh, build and manage the, the project. So uh, where it is right now, I'm not exactly sure. I think they're trying to seek uh, funding uh, to move forward uh, with their project. Uh, but again, you know, notes taken, but there's really nothing the city, city can do. It's, it's a state project on state property. I just wanted to touch base on that. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, if there are no further items, it is 645 on Tuesday, November 15th, and I am adjourning the Placerville Planning Commission meeting. Thank you.